Okay, so I just want to throw this in here as a precursor to the video that I already shot. Um, this is an article by uh, Veris Engineering. Um, it's a really good article that kind of explains what I'm talking about in the video. So we'll just go through this real quick. Um, I talk about the performance curve in the uh, in the video, and this will kind of give you a little bit better visual to it. And I'll post a uh, I'll post a, a link to this. There's also there's a lot of good information in here too. So you know I recommend you read this article. I'll post the link. Um, so if we look at this table right here, um, you'll notice that this is static pressure right over here. Um, they've got for suction and blowing, they've just used an example. They're, they've picked some example here. Uh, I don't know particularly which fan this is, but this is, this is a very good example to show you what I'm talking about. Um, zero millimeters of water column, which, um, you could convert, there's 25.4 millimeters is in an inch so um you know this would be about an inch of water column down here so right around a half an inch of water column is where a three or four core radiator is going to be uh two core radiator is probably going to be in the seven to ten uh range somewhere in there um you'll notice what's happening here uh if you got a fan that's rated at uh well they've got cfm right here so 1328 cfm at 10 millimeters of water column that efficiency for this particular fan has dropped down to 926 millimeters or uh sorry cfm okay as you progress right uh if you get to right around where a three or four core radiator is going to be you're going to be down to around 454 to 342 cfm with this particular example and then of course if you were all the way down here, which uh, I don't know of any radiator that's this bad. Um, the worst is probably going to be around 20, 22, maybe, um, with a air conditioning condenser in front of it or something like that, where uh, you have more static uh, pressure. Um, your performance falls off. So what you want to do is SPAL, and this is why I like SPAL, they publish the data for the fans, and we'll look at that in a second. Um they publish the data, and what you can do is you can select a higher performance fan. Now, in general, uh, the higher performance fans are they they are the higher performance fans are going to have a better performance curve, which means that with higher static pressure, you're going to get a better flow rate than you will with a lower profile or a smaller motor or um, a cheaper fan. Uh, this is why, you know, the cheap fans, the eBay fans, those are not a good idea. We don't want to do those because, we, first of all, they don't publish the data for them, you know. Uh, so the, other, the second part is they're going to have kind of probably low torque motors on them. Uh, that's, why, that's why we go with Spall, okay? Even Flexolite, they don't, they don't post it. Here is the performance curve. Here's a performance curve example, okay? So the dots right here, this would be, they're, they're using a 12-inch fan as an example right here. Um, high performance, which is the biggest one they make, and then this is the low profile, so the opposite end of the spectrum, they make a medium profile as well. Um, so you'll notice this is a flow rate right here, and this is static pressure right here. As the static pressure increases, the flow rate decreases. Look at where the low profile fan is versus uh, the high performance fan. So with the obviously we're going to want this if we've got a three or four core radiator with a high static pressure, we're going to want to maintain the flow right here. Um, uh, say a two core radiator kind of like the champion that I talk about in the video, it's going to be somewhere over here. This is why you get away with a lower profile fan with lower static pressure or with a thinner radiator. Um, so, you know, thinner radiator is going to have less static pressure. Thicker radiator is going to have more static pressure. So that's just a real quick thing on that. Um, the, and the SPAL uh, fan data is available on the SPAL uh, website. I think JEGS is probably the easiest place to get it. So anyways, I just want to stick this in here as a precursor to the uh, video before you watch it. All right, so I want to go over this again because... Um, I think I've done it in videos where I was actually doing a project, but this is just going to be an explanation. So um, running into a whole lot of questions very frequently, many forums about radiators and electric fans and CFM and what's the most CFM that I can get. I've covered this before and I've talked about performance curves of electric fans, but I'm going to kind of show you guys um, here by pointing it out. 
So this is the radiator out of my 66 Mustang, just as an example. And uh, it's kind of good because I've got two different examples here. I've got this and I've got the truck and they're completely different setups. Um, this is a two core champion radiator. It's uh, two uh, three quarter inch tubes, I want to say, that are in this. Um, so it's a pretty thin radiator. Uh, it's actually, its performance is actually better than a three core copper aluminum radiator. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, it's got a medium profile spall fan on it. Um, this is a spall 1516. And um, this fan uh, is, I want to say about 1300 CFM. I forget exactly. I could be wrong on that, but it's not that important. Um, what's more important about electric fans, and this is the point I want to get across, it is not about the free, the free flow rate of the fan. That is something that everybody's always asking, how, do, how can I get 2,000 CFM? You can have a 2,000 CFM fan that does not perform as well on your radiator as a 1,500 CFM fan because the performance curve will not be as good. If it's a cheap electric fan, they may, they may rate it at 2,000 CFM. And the second you put it in front of, you know, seven or eight millimeters of water column, which is about what this radiator is. This is this two core radiator with the fin spacing that it's got. Um, what static pressure is, it's resistance to flow. Resistance to flow is a direct relationship of how thick the radiator is, um, how large the tubes are, as in how, how wide they are this direction, which is not a huge factor. The bigger factor is the fin spacing. And um, the biggest factor being the thickness of the radiator. So this is a very thin radiator, very, very thin. Um, so the uh, performance curve of this fan on this thinner radiator is going to be much better than if it would be if it was thicker. A cheaper fan with seven millimeters of water column, you know, uh, static pressure, uh, that cheap fan may only move 300 CFM that's rated at 2000 free flow. Um, whereas say this fan is rated, let's call it uh, 1300. I forget. Um, but let's call it 1300. Um, if this is rated at 1300 spall, and this is why I like spall, you know, this is, I'll explain exactly why I'm a fan of this brand. They have the performance data sheet or what you would call a cut sheet or a spec sheet available for their product. They tell you what the performance curve of this fan will be with a certain static pressure. Now, what static pressure do you have? That's actually pretty easy. And I've, I've referenced an article many times in videos, and I think I'll put it in the link description again here, that the uh, thickness of the radiator in general, like a four core radiator is going to be right around 15 millimeters of water column. You know, that's like a half an inch of water column, give or take, you know, the quick conversion in my head. Um, the thicker the radiator is, the more resistance it has. That's all its static pressure is, is resistance to flow. The more resistance to flow, the better performance curve you need. In general, a larger motor, a larger DC motor, which is usually the problem for a lot of folks because they get deeper when that happens, larger DC motors are going to have more torque. More torque means it is going to be able to pull through higher static pressure. That's all it is. There are plenty of fans out there that work great. Mishimoto, Flexalite, they make good products. The problem that I have is they don't they don't give you the performance curve. You, d you don't know what it's going to flow with a certain amount of resistance. They're all absolutely, even Flexalite tells you on their website, they say, by the way, these are rated at free flow rate. That's all good, but I need to know what it's going to flow with my radiator, you know? So this fan works really well because this radiator is very low static pressure. It's If, if it's seven millimeters of water column, I'd be surprised. I really would. Um, it's just a really thin radiator. Let's go take a quick look at the truck and we'll look at the high performance, you know, high profile spall fans that are on that and why that's that way. All right, this is a Frostbite FB155. It is a four core aluminum radiator. And I'll talk about aluminum radiators at the very end here and why they're better. Um, this, uh, like I said, is a four core. It's an interesting, it's interesting to see an aluminum radiator as a four core. It's actually, this is not the most optimal radiator. Um, I believe Champion makes this for Holly. I'm almost certain of that, actually. So Frostbite is a Holly brand. I think Champion makes it for them. I can't tell you that for sure, but I think so. 
Anyways, um, normally, actually a two core with this same thickness would probably be better. Larger tubes are better. Um, I put this in here because I was having some issues with the Griffin radiator that I had, and I thought this looked really interesting, and I did want to try it. Um, and it does. It works absolutely fine. Um, but the tubes in this are only 11 16 and there's four of them, and they're just not quite as efficient. But for this, it, it works fine. Um, so this radiator, I think, is two and a half inches thick. If I, you know, I'm trying to remember this. It's been a while now because I haven't had to screw with this because it works perfectly. Um, we have a shroud in here too. That's also important. You're you're gonna want a shroud, but there's more stuff that goes behind that. You gotta have reliefs in it for rolling down the highway because, um, you know, that helps. Um, these are the high profile, high performance ball fans right here. These maintain. Uh, a really good performance curve with a lot of resistance to flow because remember I got my radiator here I've got air conditioning here. I've got a trans cooler up here All that starts to restrict flow to a certain extent it's mainly the radiator, but that stuff does add to it. Okay This fan right here. These are dual 13 inch high performance fans I want to say the two of them together about 3500 CFM free flow rate um, What I did when I selected these though was um, I picked the ones that had the best curve with about, uh, I think it was, I think this had 15 or 16 millimeters of water column, I, I want to say, resistance. I, I looked it up online to see about what this thickness would be. Um, and I found the fan that had the best flow rate at that static pressure. So that's what you should be doing. You should be figuring out what you think your static pressure is based on the thickness of your radiator. Um, and the fin spacing, um, then there is information online you can look up to do that. You want to get the most flow rate at that static pressure. Because like I said, you could have a fan that's actually got a lower free flow rate. Like, hey, you know, I, I'm going to buy the fan that's got 3,000 CFM rating. Yeah, it may not flow for shit at 15 millimeters of water column. Whereas the fan that's rated at, say, 1,700 or 1,500 CFM actually still flows close to that at that static pressure. Um, these spall fans, they give you that data. I don't know of any other manufacturer that uh, gives you that data. Even Flexalite tells you that they don't give you that data, which I think is just kind of hilarious. Um, you know, give, give, you, give you a curve. You know, and the easiest way to find the sheets on these, too, the cut sheets on these, is just to go on JEGS website. Um, JEGS posts them under the info sheets for all the instructions and everything they give you. They tell you exactly for each model and it gives you, it gives you a little curve and it's, and it has all the different, you know, zero static pressure all the way up to, you know, 25 or 20 uh, millimeters of water column. Um, you know, which is about an inch of water column and then none of them are that high, I don't think, you know, and basically what happens when you start to get to 20 or 15, the flow rate on some fans is zero. You know, a, a medium profile or a low profile fan on here wouldn't move any air. It would move 100 CFM. It would not do you any good. You need to be able to pull through the radiator. And just a quick note on aluminum radiators. Why are they more efficient than copper? I know copper is a better conductor. I realize that. That is not the only factor. Aluminum radiators, the fins are welded to the tubes. That is a, an efficient connection. You lose a ton of efficiency in a copper radiator because the copper fins and the copper tubes are brazed or soldered to each other. Not brazed, they're actually soldered. There's a huge inefficiency in the solder connection in between them. Um, the other reason, aluminum radiators usually, unlike my truck, which is a little bit weird, but it's still got larger tubes in it. The tubes are much wider because remember, they're shaped like that. They're a lot wider. A wider tube, a fatter tube gives you much better heat transfer than a, a smaller tube. Why can you get away with a larger tube? Because aluminum is much stronger. Copper will crack. Um, that is all that it is. The tubes are a little bit thicker and they're uh, much stronger. All the connections are a lot stronger. So that's why aluminum is better. Um, so that's just a quick kind of thing on cooling systems. You know, just remember, look up the performance curve for the fan. If you find another manufacturer that's got performance curves listed for their fans, you let me know because Spall's the only one that I've been easily able to find it. Maybe you could do it by calling, you know, another fan manufacturer. Uh, but I, you know, personally, I'm going to stick with this brand because they make good stuff, although Holly owns them now. So I don't know if anything's going to change, but they were an Italian company. They make OEM stuff. You know, Spall makes things for cars that are on the road. Um, 
OEM fans are a good choice too because they're designed with much of this in mind. And uh, you know, OEM stuff is always better quality than aftermarket, just because it's it's got to be. Um, so, anyways, uh, that's uh, the rest of that on the aluminum radiator side and the fans.